in this question, if you read through the info, nothing's that interesting. I mean, everything has been given to you on the diagram as well. They do also say that these lines are parallel, so just look out for that. All right, question A, calculate the gradient of QS. And I see the marker location has disappeared, but this one is worth two marks. So we know that the gradient formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so that's gonna give us, or let, we should actually say that the gradient of QS, and so that's gonna give us six minus, now we don't have the point S, but what we do know is that it also goes to the origin, and they did confirm that it goes to the origin. So the origin has coordinates of zero, zero, and then we can say three minus zero, and if you go work this out, you should get two. So the answer for that one is going to be two. Calculate the size of angle theta. Now we know that in grade 11, whenever you have the gradient of a line, you can work out the angle just using angle of inclination. So we can say that the shift tan of two, and if you go type shift tan of two on your calculator, you will get 63,43 degrees. Question six, I mean, question C, sorry, says determine the gradient of PS. So they want the gradient of this line over here. But now we don't know what the coordinates of S are. So we can't really get the gradient. But what we can do is we can realize that if this is 63,43, then angle O1 would also be 63,43. And that's just because of vertically opposite angles. And then we could easily work out this angle over here because it is the exterior angle of the triangle. See, we've got a triangle over here and this angle is the exterior angle. So you can easily say then that alpha is gonna be equal to 63,43 plus 20,23 and that's just because of exterior angle of a triangle. And so alpha should be 83.66 degrees. Now, if you don't like using the exterior angle method, I know a lot of students don't, then because you have this angle, you could easily work out this angle using sum of angles in a triangle, and then you could use straight lines to get alpha. You will get to the same answer. Right, now because we know this angle alpha, which is the inclination angle of this line, we could then use the tan in order to get the gradient. So we could say that the gradient of PS is gonna be the tan of 83.66, and so that's gonna be nine. It rounds off beautifully to nine. Then question D, determine the equation of PS. Well, that's quite easy. So we know that a straight line is MX plus C. We've just worked out its gradient as nine. And then to find C, you would plug in any point on the line, which could be this one over here. And so we would plug that in as three equals to nine times negative two plus C. And if you had to work that out, you would find out that C is equal to 21. And so the final answer for that one would be y equals to 9x plus 21. Next question, determine the coordinates of s. And that one's for four marks. I think what I would do here is, I would realize that s is the, is the intersection point between this line and this line, okay? So, we already know the equation of PS, so let's quickly work out the, the equation of QS. Now, QS would be MX plus C because it's a straight line. We already worked out its gradient earlier as two. And then because it's going through the origin, it actually won't have a y-intercept. Well, it would be zero, so this is the equation. And so we can then say that QS is y equals to two X and PS is y equals to 9x plus 21. And to find the points of intersection, you make those two equal to each other. And this would give you 7x equals to minus 21. So x must be minus three. And then to find the y value, you can plug this x value into any of the equations, either this one or this one. And so I'm just gonna plug it into this one over here. And so y would be that, which is negative six. And so the coordinates of s would have to be negative three and negative six. The next question, calculate the length of QS. Now, we've already got 
S's coordinates. And we have Q's coordinates, so that's quite easy. And so to find the length, we could use the distance formula. And so that would be 3 minus minus 3 and 6 minus minus 6. And if you had to go type that all in, it gives you 6 square root 5, which if you round to two decimals will be 13, 42. Question G. It is further given that PQRS is a parallelogram. Determine the coordinates of R. Right, now guys, these are easy, easy questions. Some teachers overcomplicate this, but this is an easy type of question. Let me show you what to do. So if we imagine that it is a parallelogram, like they said, now they would like to know what the coordinates of R would be. So what you can do, for example, is if you look at P and then you look at Q, have a look how it changes. So can you see that the X value, the X value goes from minus two and it goes up to three. So how much does the X value increase by? It increases by five. So the X value increases by five. If you look at the Y values, the Y values go from three to six. So the Y value increases by three. It is gonna do the exact same when you go from S to R. So to find the R X value, you're just gonna say minus three, which is this one, and then you're just gonna increase it by five. So you're gonna say plus five, and so that's gonna be two. And then to find the R Y value, you're just gonna say minus six, and then you in, you're gonna increase that by three, and that'll give you negative three. And so the coordinates of R must be two and negative three, and your reason is called inspection. We solve that by inspection. And the last question, if P, which is minus two and three, Q, which is three and six, and T are collinear, determine the value of K. When points are collinear, it means that they have the same gradient. Okay, so let's write that. Collinear points have the same gradient. So what we can do then is we can go work out the gradient of PQ. So we can work out the gradient of PQ using the gradient formula. So that would be six minus three divided by three minus minus two. And so that would just give us three over five. And then if we, now that must be the same gradient as QT, for example. So you could say, you could say that the gradient of PQ must be the same as the gradient of QT. Or if you wanted to, you could say the gradient of PQ must be the same as the gradient of PT. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna use this one. So we can say that the gradient of QT must also be three over five. So we can say three over five is equal to, now I'm gonna use the gradient formula between these two coordinates. And so I could say 12 minus six over K minus three. And so what I would do is just simplify a little bit. So three over five is equal to six over K minus three. And then I would do cross multiplication. So this would go up there and this would go there. So that's gonna give you three bracket K minus three equals to six multiplied by five. And so that would be three K minus nine equals to 30. And so three K would be 39. And so if you divide by three, K would be equal to 13.